Good evening, friends. So this is really more of a video blog update. Um, I haven't done much in the way of projects. I've actually been kind of recovering. I got a lot done last week, so I needed a few days to rest. But I did take some time on Sunday to get some to-do items done around the workshop. So one of the things you can see, uh, yeah, you can see on camera, I've got my bandsaw on the other side of the shop now, and I've got my router table out. Um, but I want to talk for a second about the more important things. So I added a circuit here, a 20 amp circuit to handle um, just various tools. It brings power to this wall. I also put a circuit on the outside of the wall and put it on GFCI. Again, another 20 amp circuit. Ah, sorry, had something in my throat. Didn't need a bottle of water, didn't need both hands for it. So, but I want to talk for a second about one of the more important things I did. And it doesn't look like much. <coughs> so I cut a six inch hole in the wall and ran my dust collection through here. Now, a long time ago, I made a dust separator. Uh, I made a cyclone with a 55 gallon barrel. That video is still in my collection. It still works, but I now have it connected to a Harbor Freight 2 horsepower uh, blower. You know, maybe on a good day, it's a, it's a horsepower. Um, and so I eventually will install a switch here so that I can turn it on and off from inside. It's not as fancy as a remote, but you know what? This isn't a cabinet factory. This is a two car garage that I do a little bit of woodworking and a little bit of welding in and it'll be fine. Now, I for right now, I'm just con controlling it with my uh, breaker panel over here. It does make, you know, this thing is on a dedicated 20 amp circuit and it does make the, the lights flicker a bit. Um, I think I've only got 100 amps coming into the house and one of the future upgrades is, is to put 200 amp service in. That's not a today project as they say. So uh, what is a today project is I want to upgrade my miter saw bench to include a dust um, hood. Um, I think it'll be a more efficient way to deal with the dust. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fabricate something that just sits here. I very rarely move this miter saw back and forth. I probably should have built this differently, but the reality is it is what it is. So I'm gonna build a hood that comes up here. And there are a bunch of different ways to do this, but the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna build a frame for it. And um, I'm going to, um, then use plywood on the frame. So I'm going to box it in a little bit so that it uh, behaves the way I want it to. So that's what I'm up to. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my screws in the, the first piece of two by four. And I think that's about the right depth here. I think it's roughly centered. So at this point, I've got the back of this fabricated. Now I need to bring in my sides that'll come up. All right, this is ugly. The joints suck, it's, it's poorly done, but you know what, it's solid. I think that's solid enough. <clears throat> I don't, and it's a dust hood. It's not structural, but I could actually flip it over with the dust hood. So. Even though it's ugly, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So let me make it even stronger by putting some plywood on it. I try to keep my leftovers and one of my favorite things is when I have a leftover piece that's actually the size I need to do something with. Just happens this one is. Now, I'm not gonna do the same sort of cluster fuckery that I just did. I'm actually gonna do this one right. So I'll put a bracket on the bottom temporarily. Good 
enough. Let's get a feel for what this really looks like. Oh yeah, that's it's a couple inches short, but for what I'm building, this is good enough. And that looks pretty good. So I do need to fit a, a port, but it's gonna go on the side here. Um, and there's a reason for that. Actually, you know, it may wind up on the bottom. I think it is gonna wind up on the bottom. But I don't like to work upside down, so I'm going to pre-attach some screws. Okay. I do need a hole in the back. So let me find the drill bit. And let's see if the drill bit's big enough to do what I want. Not quite big enough. No problem. I just want to make it a little bit bigger. So I pass the power cord out the back. And a little bit of airflow coming in right here won't be a bad thing. Let's get all these chips off. And in fact, let's get this dust up. All right, so I've got the last piece of scrap here that's gonna form the edge here, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, and then I'll secure it. There we go. It's not gonna be perfect looking, but you know what? This cost me Two two by four, so seven dollars worth of wood and some screws. Okay, granted, it's a lot of screws, but all the plywood is scrap from projects that I've just saved over time. Uh, some of this I've had for three, four years, and I just I hang on to my scraps if I think they're big enough to be reused, and then I reuse them when I have an appropriate project. Now the only thing that's left to do is I need to find the dust port that I've got that I got from Peach Street Woodworking and put it on the bottom. And then it's good. Um, and I think this is going to help catch and capture a lot of the dust and keep it from uh, going anywhere besides my dust collector. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting and entertaining. Um, please like my channel and subscribe to my videos if you'd like to see more. Have a great night.